Hi folks, geocaching is a really fun, really cool activity where you can use an app and the GPS to go on an adventure or a hike to find that location. Once you get there, there may be a prize in it or a logbook or a code that you enter in to kind of claim that cache. Geocaching is meant for everybody uh, except this one is a little bit different. Uh, certainly awesome in the spirit of adventure and science because it is going at the very bottom of not only the ocean, but the whole earth in the Challenger Deep section of the Marianas Trench. Uh, we got an email just a week ago if we could machine a titanium geocache along with a syntactic foam marker. It's going on an expedition at the end of February. Super cool. The takeaways from this video, number one, some really good tricks around working with fonts in Fusion, uh, as well as some recipes around machining titanium, especially with small tools. We'll be doing that on the Tormach, and we're machining the syntactic foam marker over on the UMC 750. Welcome to another Wednesday widget. First off, we didn't have any fillets along these sharp edges, but the customer had mentioned we've got to add fillets because we can't have any sharp edges. The other interesting thing was a fusion command that I've actually never used, which is the emboss command. So I took a little look. It's actually a pretty useful command. If we take a look at this text on top of this cylinder, if we did our normal extrude, we could extrude it up and you'll notice it doesn't wrap to the cylinder. Now with the extrude command, we can fix that by changing the start from the profile plane to the object. And if we pick our cylinder now, it will wrap the bottom of that to the object. Super useful. What the emboss command does is keeps everything normal to the surface it's being embossed from. We can emboss out further, or we can come in with it. So how do we add all these fillets? Well, you could go through and select a bunch of things, but frankly, it's a pain in the butt. Here's a good trick. I deleted that fillet. S for the keyboard shortcut window, F-I-L for fillet. Pick our fillet, look at the part head on. And before I drag my box, go up to the select window, selection filters, turn off anything that you don't want to select. In this case, I only want to select faces and I'm gonna drag a window that just barely catches the top edge of my part. And now I've only selected faces and I've only selected those faces that are along the top of the part. This saves me from having to go around and control click all these individual islands of texts. If when you do that, you happen to pick too many things, you can hold the control key and drag a window around anything you want to further deselect or edit the selection of. We needed to trim down our raw material. Bandsaw is normally the way to go, but we tried it and we just weren't getting the right kind of cut and I didn't want to ruin an otherwise pretty good and expensive bandsaw blade. So, We've got a five flute quarter inch end mill and we're using 2D contour to walk around the outside profile of this part and do what Vince calls the onion skin method, which is pretty cool because we leave about 10 thousandths of an inch of material, kind of like a full length tab, and then we can just use a hammer and punch the part out. We ran that quarter inch tool at 130 surface feet per minute and two thousandths of an inch feed per tooth. And that was kind of the theme throughout a lot of this titanium work was a relatively low surface footage that helps keep our heat down and a relatively high chip load per tooth. Now, 2,007 inch feed per tooth is not crazy, especially in bigger machines, but it is relatively high for a lot of these small tools. But what we found was that worked better for heat management. We didn't want to cut a really small chip or in rub or risk creating a chip that just couldn't even hold the heat. That causes your part to warm up. And we weren't using flood coolant. Now, I generally would recommend flood coolant, but it was awesome to see how well we got along here on this machine where we happen to only have a fog buster. We also didn't have time to order any titanium specific tools. And I think it's awesome to show that regular end mills, these are all really end mills designed to cut steel, handled the titanium just fine. I'm not joking, we didn't break a single tool throughout the process, I fully expected to. We kept a relatively low axial depth of cut. This also aged in chip evacuation. And that's where the fog buster also shines. That directed air blast does a really good job. And recutting chips can be one of the biggest reasons you break an end mill, uh, whether it's because recutting those chips creates additional heat and friction, or the recutting those chips means you've got an inconsistent chip load because you're just dropping particles of material in there that the end mill's hitting as it goes around. So chip evacuation is, in some respects, even more important than the thermal element or the lubrication element of a cutting fluid. 
We machined the profile of the part with a five flute half inch end mill. Again, relatively low surface speed of 157 feet per minute, but keeping that feed per tooth up there, really light passes of 10 thousandths of an inch step over, and the results were great. To face the part off, we used a 3 8 inch four flute end mill, 147 feet per minute, eight inches a minute, about 1.3 thousandths of an inch feed per tooth. But here's what surprised us. We had done this with a climb milling strategy. We almost always climb mill. We got a better surface finish though, switching that direction to conventional. There are two mark lines that are visible on the part, but a lot of that is accentuated by the camera. Uh, we actually put our profilometer on here and got a 12 RA, which is awesome. Uh, if we had wanted to put this on a granite block and wet sand it to smooth that out or polish it up, I have no doubt that that, was, that would have sanded out and polished up really nicely, fairly quickly. There's a fair amount of time spent surfacing a lot of the rounded or filleted edges on this part. Again, we had to avoid any sharp corners. I really thought we were gonna run into tool life limits. Uh, titanium is, is notorious for having a finite amount of time that that tool can cut. It's a gummy material and it just wears out tools. Uh, but we kept that surface speed low. We kept the feed per tooth relatively high. And even on these 3D strategies where we had a relatively shallow step down, in this case, a, a ramp strategy with five thousandths of an inch, the tools ran great for quite a bit of cutting time. Very happy with the finishes. After that, drilling our through hole with a 0.358 inch drill, 350 RPMs, two thousandths of an inch feed per revolution, no problem at all. We then did additional surfacing to surface out a really nice relief at the top of that hole because that's where the rope is certainly the most susceptible to any sort of a sharp edge. And then it was on to all of the small text. So our strategy here was to step down in tool sizes, do the most we could with the largest tool. And that first tool that we started with is 3 seconds of an inch. That's still under a 0.1 inch or 2.4 millimeter tool, fairly small. We used a 2D contour strategy 100 surface feet per minute, and again, 2 thousandths of an inch feet per tooth, but we did so with multiple step downs of 10 thousandths of an inch. So keeping that axial cut fairly light. It's no question a trade-off, it's longer machining time, but in this case, we didn't care. We didn't wanna ruin the material. We didn't wanna to break tools if we didn't have to, uh, and we wanted to get the part done. After we cut everything we could with the 3 32nd tool, we stepped down to a 1 16th tool, and we wanted to use a rest machining style strategy so that we didn't have to recut things that were already cut. Um, now we did that in the 2D contour strategy. It has a rest machining option, uh, but I've had very mixed results with it. So be careful when you use it. Uh, and here's why. The rest machining strategy in the 2D options does not work the same way it works on the 3D options. On the 3D options, it's a truly intelligent rest machining strategy. It looks at the solid model of the stock that has previously been machined and uses that to calculate the tool path. So it's relatively foolproof. The 2D contour rest machining that we used here is not foolproof. What happens is when you put in a tool diameter, in this case, the 332 seconds, fusion in this tool path is assuming that anything that a 332 second end mill or that tool diameter could have reached was machined. And that's where it can bite you. We actually got along great here, but I think it's worth understanding that methodology and be careful when you use it. Nevertheless, the 1 16th end mill ran great and allowed us to machine all the text features that we needed to. Um, after that, it was some more surfacing to machine in the fillet on the top side, which helps us avoid any sharp edges. And then interestingly, uh, the customer wanted a radius in the bottom of the text because Apparently, and I'm no marine biologist, avoiding the intersection of two sharp walls can help limit or inhibit the uh, likelihood that some object or animal is going to attach there and start growing on this thing. Now, I have no idea what grows at 36,000 feet underwater, but apparently there is marine life down there in some form. For fixturing, we started off on op one with the super glue technique. If you're not familiar with how amazingly capable and secure super glue can be, this part's a great candidate. Once you hit that kind of six inch by six inch surface area, you've got 36 square inches, super glue will hold parts down surprisingly well and you can actually kind of wail on them. What that did for us was gave us full access to the periphery of the part. We then flipped it for op two, putting it in the mod vice system for the majority of the text and other machining work and got along great. After that, we hopped over to the UMC 750. We had to machine the syntactic foam float arrow and this was pretty cool it was sort of specifically designed for the ability to withstand the absolute incredible pressures down at the bottom of the ocean 
Uh, and it does so by having small glass beads inside of it. Actually, they may not all be glass. They can be some other materials, but basically it creates very small microscopic hollow things, which is what causes this to float. So the titanium marker should rest on the ocean floor, and then there'll be a special type of string or rope, which will then attach to this float so that if anybody else is able to go down there and see this thing, they can claim the geocache. The takeaway here, very simple part for a five axis, just a few different tool orientation strategies to machine this and engrave it. But I didn't want to contaminate our machine and the coolant with this foam. So we turn the coolant off. Two ways to turn off the coolant. You can select all of your operations in Fusion, right click, compare and edit, type in coolant, and you can then bulk disable all of them at once, super handy, or you can just shut the bulb out at the machine. Nevertheless, we wanted to keep this stuff contained, uh, and we then used our new favorite shop tool, which is a cordless battery-powered DeWalt shop vac. This thing is absolutely amazing. If you've followed our channel, you know we try to like keeping a clean shop, not always easy, so it's little tools like this that help make it easier, um, either to shop vacuum up directly or just brushing it into little piles. And after we were done machining, we used some clean white Scotch-Brite just to help clean up a few different edges and burrs, and Noga makes a plastic deburring tool is really nice. If you've ever had to deburr any sort of a plastic, you know that a traditional metal deburring tool can just gouge in. Uh, this plastic tool works great, so highly recommended if you have to do any work like that. Try to really pull it nice and smooth so that you get a corkscrew kind of chip forming as you move along that edge. It's really actually satisfying to do, and we were done. So hopefully this project makes it to the bottom of the ocean. We will keep everyone updated over on an NYC page card here. Uh, on what happens with this project and this trip down to the Marianas Trench. I certainly hope it goes well for everybody involved. And we've got many of these titanium recipes on the Tormach 770 over on Proven Cut. Otherwise, folks, hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed. Take care. See you soon.